everyone, I am Christy from YA and Wine, and I am so excited to be here tonight at my favorite indie bookstore, The King's English, and so, so excited to get to have author Aditi Karana here to discuss her beautiful new novel, Library of Fates. So Aditi, do you want to start by just telling readers who haven't had a chance to get to read Library of Fates yet just what it's all about? Sure. Um, it is, first of all, I'm so excited to be here and to be sipping wine before a book event. <laughs> I'm talking about Library of Fates. Um, Library of Fates is feminist historical fantasy, so it's loosely based. I did research on Alexander the Great's invasion into India, wow. and I wanted to talk about the intersections of like colonialism and feminism. So it's a book that... While I was um, researching it, I, I looked into Indian history as well as mythology, and so I was reading both Greek myth as well as Indian myth, and what I found was a lot of this myth just revolves around um, men going out and having these great adventures, and like women staying at home, and right. like being subjected to these purity tests, and you know, it's like this very sad story, so I wanted to tell the story of these two women who go on an adventure together, and because you just don't see enough of that, I think, in myth Absolutely. or literature. So, and in reading it, that all the research you did on the mythology and the folklore, it definitely comes through the text. So, I was wondering, is any of that based on real myths, or is it just something that you've come up with and kind of put your own spin on? Well, it's interesting. I, I feel like I borrowed from different traditions, and I, I borrowed a lot from Hindu and Buddhist mythology, so there's sort of a storyline about reincarnation, as, uh -huh. you know, and um, I borrowed from aspects of history, but a lot of it is invented, so it's like a fictionalized ancient India. Um, so it's kind of like, uh, in terms of the descriptions, a lot is borrowed from like tiny little you know, towns that I've been to in various parts of India, but it's no specific place. Right. Wow, that is so fascinating. That adds a lot of depth to what I've already read, and I loved it. Oh, I'm so way. glad you it's loved it. such a wonderful book. But that folklore and mythology element was fantastic. Um, another thing I love about the book, and it's different than what I've seen before, is at the beginning of the novel you have an author's note. I do. And it's just so heartfelt and moving, and it talks a lot about your experience as kind of feeling like the other in society. Mm -hmm. And so I was wondering if you could tell us about what the first book you read, where you were able to kind of see yourself in that book and what that experience was like for you. Yeah, I mean, I remember reading, you know, Jacqueline Woodson's work and Arundhati Roy because I grew up during a time where you just did not see, I didn't see characters who looked like me in literature or in mm -hmm. film. And I'm an immigrant. I was born in India, I'm a woman, I'm a person of color, and so I grew up in this landscape where like, I just did not see Indian characters in film unless it was like a stereotype. Right. So that's obviously, and then you know, like, you grow up feeling kind of like erased. Um, and at, you know, after I wrote Mirror in the Sky, readers, young readers started getting in touch with me about how much it meant to them to see characters who look like them in literature. Mm -hmm. And um, those were really like the, I, I've heard this, this amazing quote that it's some famous librarian who's talked about it. She says that books are both a window and a mirror. And they're like a window because we can sort of look through it and see other people and how they live. And they're a mirror because we can see a reflection of ourselves. And right. I think that's ideally what books should be. And so I kind of wanted to write this book that's both um, a window and a mirror because I feel like that's really what we need in this time. And I feel like it's, it's important for, um, immigrants and people of color and, and everyone to feel like they're a part of the fabric of the society and that you know we need to tell stories about everyone who's a part of it's it's important to see ourselves as well as tell stories about ourselves absolutely which is why the we need diverse books and the mm -hmm. own voices authors movements are so important and I am so happy that we're seeing more and more of that yeah. and your books definitely I think contain some fantastic um, strong young women of color and so it was even not being a woman of color myself it was so great to be able to read through those perspectives and I found them absolutely inspiring. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about with both of your books that you've done is, is um, you contain some really profound and deep thought-provoking elements to both stories. So in Mirror in the Sky we've got this parallel universe, mm -hmm. which was so neat, and then with Library of Fates, you're playing a lot with the idea of fate and destiny. Does it exist? If it mm -hmm. does exist, how much control do we have and should we have over that? 
And so um, what I was wondering is when you are creating your story ideas, do they come from thinking about those different things or how do they become so integrated in your stories? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I, I get this question a lot because people are like, do you start with characters? Do you start with setting? Like, what do you uh -huh. start with? And I really start with themes and it's just kind of like the ideas that are floating around my head. And with Mirror, I was thinking about, I read this column called The Ghost Ship by Cheryl Strayed that okay. literally changed my life. It's so amazing. And she was someone, it was a Dear Sugar column. Someone wrote into her and asked, um, it, it was this man who was like in his 40s and he was like, I've been married for the past 10 years. I am thinking about having, my wife and I are thinking about having a child, but we're not sure. We travel a lot, so we could or we couldn't. I'm really ambivalent. How do I know what path to choose? And, um, and you know, Cheryl Strayed was like, well, you, you will, you're never going to be sure what you left behind. You just okay. kind of have to commit to one path and that other path will sort of be like the ghost ship that you didn't, you know, find yourself on. And I found that so moving that there's this element of loss and kind of like saying goodbye to this particular path, but always carrying it in your mind in this interesting way. And so mm -hmm. I wanted to speak to that because we've all been at this crossroads. And I think finding a sense of belonging is so tied to the decisions that we make and like what sort of factors into those decisions. So that was the theme going into this, belonging and race and class and what happens to the paths that we don't choose. Um, and then I was actually doing research on Syrian refugees and um, the UN High Commission for Refugees has reported that I, I think there are 65 million refugees wow. in the world, uh, which is like the populations of like Shanghai, Beijing, New York and Delhi combined. That's and isn't that growing. crazy, right? Yeah. Um, and that population is only going to grow over the years. And I was like, what is this experience of losing everything? What does it mean? <laughs> and I wanted to write about that. And I wanted to write about it with these characters who are women and have lost everything and need to, re even though they come from completely different backgrounds, they need to rely on each other to sort of build a new life for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and that theme and that idea really appealed to me because I think women are inherently really resourceful. Right. Um, and I wanted to speak to that with this book. So I start with themes and ideas that are kind of going through my head and I feel like I build characters and setting around that. I love that. I think it just adds so much depth to both of these novels. Oh, thank so you. So for me personally, I, I it added just an extra level of something to really dig into and enjoy while I was reading, so I really appreciated that. Um, so this cover is probably oh the best YA book cover that I have seen this year, and that's saying something. <laughs> okay, so my cover designer is um, Teresa Evangelista at Penguin, and she is basically the most talented woman on earth. I can never, it's, I feel like everyone compliments these covers, and I can't take any credit for them. She's just amazing. <laughs> I've been very, very lucky, but it's, it's very pretty, I know. Oh, it's beautiful, and there's so many details in it, and I'll, I'll, put up a, a close-up of the image so that everyone can see it really closely. Um, but there's some fantastic details in here that really are applicable and important to the story. So she just did a phenomenal job. What was your reaction the first time you saw it? Oh my god, my mind was blown. I was like, and first of all, it's like pink, which I just, I love pink. <laughs> yeah. um, and the only thing is the initial image had um, this Amrita's character holding a globe in her hand. And that was the only change that I requested was can she be holding a dagger? Because right. that's such an important part of the story. So we, um, mod we, you know, the artist was able to modify that, and so now she's holding a dagger. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, yeah, I love it. It's it's also just seeing this beautiful South Asian woman on the cover of a book. I just, mm -hmm. you never see that. So right. It's very cool. Oh, it's gorgeous. So I'm so so happy for you that you got to have such a beautiful cover on your book because it it matches the insides in my opinion. The, it's Aww. as beautiful a story the cover is beautiful so um bb is actually here in salt lake city today with the penguin teen tour so we've also got morgan rhodes and romina russell and danielle vega so we're really really lucky to have you guys they are such Sorry. cool women too i've been on the road with them for a couple of days and uh -huh. it's just we've had we've been having a lot of fun so it's a really really great group of authors oh that's awesome every time we get the penguin teen tour it just seems like the authors are having the best it's time it's so great it's it's really fantastic it's the first time i've done it and i'm uh -huh. having the best time oh that's great do you guys get to talk about craft and writing or just 
relax and have a lot of fun we while you're We just kind of relax and have fun. We do talk about books and craft and writing, but mostly we're just enjoying each other's company. That's awesome. Well, we are so, so happy to have you here. Oh, thank we're you. We're excited to get to go over to our gallery next door and hear what you guys have to say about your books and the other authors' books as well. Um, but congratulations, V, you. on your beautiful, beautiful book. Thank you I'm so, so much. excited for you. Um, if you guys haven't bought it yet, it came out on Tuesday of this week, so it's officially out and available. So, Aditi, cheers. Cheers! And thank you so much again for taking the time to talk with me today. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having me. I, this is so fun. Oh, absolutely. It's my pleasure.